Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to learn about how to generate descriptive statistics in Python. Now, descriptive statistics are measures that summarize important features of the data, often with a single number. Producing descriptive statistics is a common first step to take after cleaning and preparing data. So we're going to start off with descriptive statistics that are measures of center. Now, measures of center are statistics that give us a sense of what the middle or typical value of a numeric distribution is. Common measures of center include the mean, which is the average of a distribution, the median, which is the value at the middle of the distribution that separates it at the 50th percentile so that half of the data is below the median and half is above, and the mode, which is the most commonly occurring value. So to start off with here, we're going to load in some required packages. We're also going to load in the MT cars data set. It's a, and we will use this as a motivating example to look at some of these descriptive statistics. So to get the mean of data in Python with a pandas data frame, all you need to do is write the name of the data frame and then dot mean that will get you the average or mean of each column. So these are the column means. Now, if you wanted to get the row means instead of the column means, you can just supply axis equals one. The default is axis zero, but axis one will get you the mean of the rows. Similarly, to get the median of the columns, you can just use data frame dot median. So here we're going to get the median values of each of the columns. Now, the mean and median tell us something similar. They're both measures of what could be considered a central or typical value in a distribution. And depending on how your data is distributed, they could be very similar or even the same. But if you have data with some skewness in it, they can also be fairly different. So we'll show a couple different distributions and the difference between the means and medians to give an example of this distinction. So first we're going to generate some normally distributed data, and then we're just going to plot it with the mean and median plotted as well. So in the resulting plot of the normally distributed data here, the mean and median are exactly overlapped. The median is this red line, and the mean is actually a black line that's right under where the median is, so they, it's hard to even see it because they're overlapping. But with normally distributed data, the average and the median are in exactly the same place. Now let's try the same thing with some skewed data and see what the difference is. So I'm going to run this and we're going to generate another plot just with different data. And in this plot here, we can see the difference between the mean and the median. The mean bar, the black bar, has been pulled out further to the right by this skewed long tail, whereas the median bar, the red bar, is not pulled so far to the right. So it has managed to stay closer to the bulk of the data here because it's not as affected by these more extreme values. We'll give one more example here of a distribution that has some outliers to show that the mean is also affected more by outliers than the median. So we're gonna run this plot now. And we can see here that we have kind of a bimodal distribution where most of the data is right here, but there's also this blip of more extreme values or outliers up here. And for the median, the median is still almost right in the center of this first normally distributed section, whereas the mean, the black bar, has been pulled up more by these outlier values here. Now, since the median tends to resist the influence of skewness and outliers, it is known as a more robust statistic than the average or mean, which is greatly affected by skewness and outliers. So when you're dealing with a distribution that has skewness or outliers, the median will usually give you a better sense of a typical value than the mean does. Finally, the mode is just the value that occurs most frequently in a distribution or of a categorical variable. So, and to find the mode, you just use dot mode. So here we can do empty cars dot mode. That will get us the most frequent value for each column. And if you have certain values that are ties, so certain values occur the same number of times and that's the most, then you will get multiple rows returned here. So we can see in the result for MPG, for instance, there's probably not that many cars that have the exact same MPG. So we see six modes listed because maybe two cars have this, two cars have this, etc. 
So that's why there are six modes listed for MPG, but other things that occur with more frequency, like eight cylinder cars, we have one mode listed. So our measures of center give us an idea of the typical values a variable takes on. Measures of spread or dispersion are statistics that describe how data varies. Measures of spread tell us how much the data tends to diverge from the typical value. Now, one of the simplest measures of spread is just the range of the data. The range is the distance between the minimum and maximum value. So to get that for observations in pandas, you can just take the max of a column and subtract the min of a column, and that will give you the range. So for the MPG column, for instance, we could say max of that column minus min of that column, and we run that, and we see that the range is 23.5 miles per gallon. Now, as we noted earlier, the median of a data set represents the 50th percentile of the data, which means 50% of the data is below it and 50% is above it. A summary of several percentiles can be used to describe a variable spread. So one way we can look at the spread of a variable is checking the minimum value, which is the same as the zeroth percentile, the 25th percentile, which is the first quartile, the median, the 75th percentile, which is the third quartile, and the maximum. And we can check quantiles, which means a given percentile in pandas using the dot quantile function. So to extract this so-called five number summary, we can just take our MPG column, run dot quantile, and then enter the value for each of the quantiles we want to get. In this case, we're going to say zero for the minimum, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and one for the maximum. And when we run this, we're going to make a list of five numbers that's going to give us a sense of the overall distribution of this MPG variable. So we can see here in our five number summary, the minimum is 10.4 MPG, the max is 33.9, we see the median, and then we get some intermediate values here that are the quartiles. Since these five number summary values are so commonly used, you can actually get them automatically using the dot describe function in pandas we've learned about before. So we could have just taken the column and run dot describe on it. And that's going to provide these five numbers as well as some other statistics like the median. So when we run that, we can see the count, median, standard deviation, which is another measure of spread that we're going to look at in a second here, min, the percentiles, and the max. Interquartile range, or IQR, is another common measure of spread. The interquartile range is the distance between the third and first quartile. So that means between this 25% and 75%. 50% of the data is contained between these two quartiles and usually provides a pretty good bound for the bulk of the typical values of a distribution. To get the interquartile range, we could just use our quantile function and subtract the first quartile, the 25th percentile, from the 75th or third quartile. So in this case, the interquartile range is about 7.3 miles per gallon. The box plots we learned how to generate in the previous lesson on plotting in pandas is actually a visual representation of the five number summary and in interquartile range. So here we're going to pull up a box plot and just explain where the five number summary and in interquartile range appears. So this box plot along with the text kind of shows you the anatomy of a box plot and how the different key values match up with the plot. So the median is the green bar in the middle. The box here is the interquartile range with the first quartile or 25th percentile at the bottom and the third quartile or the 75th percentile at the top. And then the maximum value is the whatever the highest value is which in this case is this outlier circle. And the minimum value is whatever value is at the lowest end. In this case, there are no particular outliers, so we see no circles. So the minimum value would just be where this black bar is. Now, two other common measures of spread are variance and standard deviation. The variance of a distribution is the average of the squared differences that values have from the mean. So basically, to find the variance, you first find the mean, then you take that mean, and for every value, you subtract it from the mean, square it, and then you find the average of all those squared differences. To check the variance of a variable, you can use the dot var function. 
So here we can take our mpg column and run dot var on it. That's showing us the variance is 36. And the standard deviation of a distribution is the square root of the variance. Standard deviation can be a bit more interpretable than the variance because standard deviation is expressed in terms of the same units as the variable in question, whereas the variance is expressed in terms of squared units, which is a bit harder to get a handle on. So to check the standard deviation, you can use the .std function. So we'll take the mpg column again and run standard deviation on it. And so for this data set, there's a standard deviation of about six miles per gallon. Now note that since both variance and standard deviation are derived from the mean, they are susceptible to the influence of skew and outliers because the mean is susceptible to skew and outliers. Median absolute deviation is an alternative measure of spread to the mean that is based on the median, which inherits some of the median's robustness against the influence of skew and outliers. The median absolute deviation is the median of the absolute deviations from the median value. So basically what that means is you find the median of the data, you subtract all of the values from the median, you take the absolute value of all of those differences, and then you find the median of those differences. So to get the median absolute deviation, we can start by taking the median of our MPG column. We then subtract all of the MPG values in the column from that median. We'll take the absolute value of that whole quantity and save it. And this gives us all of our absolute deviations. Then we just have to take the median of that. So we'll take our absolute deviations, run dot median on it. And that gives us our median absolute deviation. In this case, 3.65 miles per gallon. Beyond measures of center and spread, there are some other statistics that give you a sense of the shape of a distribution. Skewness is a statistic that measures the skew or asymmetry of a distribution, while kurtosis measures how much data is in the tails of the distribution versus the center. Now we're not going to go into the exact calculations behind skewness and kurtosis in this video, but they're essentially statistics that take the idea of variance a step further. While variance involves squaring deviations from the mean, Skewness involves cubing deviations, and kurtosis involves raising those deviations to the fourth power. Pandas has built-in functions for checking skewness and kurtosis, which are dataframe.skew and dataframe.curt respectively. So we can use those on the MPG column to check their statistics. So let's run .skew on the MPG column to check its skewness. And let's also run .curt on it to check its kurtosis value. Now these values we generated for skewness and kurtosis don't really mean a lot to us if we don't have any frame of reference for how much skewness this really is or how much kurtosis this is. So to explore these two statistics a little bit further, let's generate some dummy data with different distributions and then rerun these functions on them to see how they differ. So we're going to generate four different distributions here. We're gonna make some normally distributed data, some skewed data, some uniformly distributed data, and some peaked data, which is data with a pretty sharp spike in the middle. So I'm going to run that to create our data and then generate a plot of it so we can compare how the different distributions look. So in the resulting plot here, we can see our four different distributions. The blue one is the normally distributed data. The red one is the peaked data, which looks similar to the normal distribution. It just has a sharper spike in the middle and tails that are longer. The skew data is the orange distribution, which has a big spike and then goes off more to the right. And then the uniform distribution, the green one, just samples values evenly from a given range. So let's take these four different distributions and run skew and kurtosis on them to see how the values differ. So we'll start by running skew on our data frame here. And we can see that for the normally distributed data, the skew is almost zero. That's because a true normal distribution doesn't have any skew at all. Now, the heavily skewed data has a skewness of around one. The uniform distribution is also very close to zero because that has no skewness to it either. And again, the peak distribution has almost no skewness because it is symmetrical even though it's not normal. Now let's run the kurtosis on our different distributions. 
So the normally distributed data has a kurtosis value near zero. The skewed data has a kurtosis of 1.37. That's probably because with the skewed distribution, you have a bit more of the values in a, in a long tail. So that would increase the kurtosis value. The uniform distribution actually has a negative value here. And the peak distribution that has quite a bit of the values in the two tails has the highest value for kurtosis. So to wrap up, descriptive statistics help you explore features of your data like the center, the spread, and the shape by summarizing them with numerical values. Descriptive statistics help inform the direction of an analysis and let you communicate insights quickly to others with a single value. In addition, certain values like the mean and variance are used in all sorts of statistical tests and predictive models. Now in this lesson, we generated a lot of random data to illustrate concepts but we haven't actually learned much about the functions we're using to generate the random data. In the next lesson, we're going to learn about probability distributions, including how to draw random numbers from them in order to generate data with different types of distributions. If you found this video useful, drop a like, hit subscribe, and I will see you again next time.